Hello, welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I'm Stevie B. Happy to have you with me today on Planet Sirene. Guys, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. We're going to go over here to this island, the Tans Ta'o Outpost Teleporter. We're going to grab our daily arc hunting missions, and we're going to try and complete the arc hunting mission daily circuit as quickly as humanly possible while getting as much really, really, really good information as we possibly can. There's a lot of stuff I want to pack into this video. So we're going to grab all five of the missions and we're going to get right to it. So first things first, I'm wearing my Viceroy armor. It's not ideal. Uh, there's actually better armors out there for the very first one that we're going to be up against. However, this is just the one that I'm using on the fly. So the first part of this is probably going to be the hardest for most people. And we're going to try and stack these as best as we can. Okay, so now we've got all five. Direweed, Old Penelion, Devastator Sea Wraith, Swamp Lurker, and Scout Bot. So first things first, we're going to head over here to down here where it's white to the Rift Station Teleporter down here on the bottom part of the map. This is the part that I'd like to use my Viceroy on and I'd like to have a little bit more DPS so I'm going to pull out my Kinetic Attack Nano Chip 10. And we're going to go right over here. We're going to head just south-southwest of the Rift Teleporter. And we've got our Devastator Sea Wraith right here. Now we've only got to kill five of these. Now one of the things I want to show you guys in today's video is not just how to do this circuit as quickly as possible. I also want to show you guys the loot that you're going to want to keep when you're doing the, this circuit every single day. Because there is certain loot that you're going to get from doing this circuit that you're going to want to keep. So we need specifically the level 24s. The level 24s are the Devastators. They're usually all over here. There's usually quite a few of them. You don't really have to look that hard. So here's one right here. Now there's really not a good mission you can stack with this. I've looked, I've tried, if you guys know of good stackable missions that I don't mention in the video, please let me know in the comments below. But for Devastator Sea Wraith, there's really not one. Now, I am lucky that I do have some of the old school uh, iron missions that are still active, and I actually still have a Sea Wraith iron mission, so I am slowly completing my iron Sea Wraith mission five kills at a time, because you only have to do five of these kills every single day. And I'm getting to double dip that with Codex, so that's handy dandy. Now these things do hit like a truck. Like I said, even with my Viceroy, they tend to just tromp right through me for some reason. I really need to look at the attack types better. I just know that even for me, I need protection from these guys. So since I happen to have my Viceroy and it's easy to use, I just go straight to it. And then I'll switch to my... Ascension after we d get done with these five kills. So we're on kill number four. This should be five. Bam. Okay. So we killed those. We're going to get that one off the screen. Now, when we were killing those, we got this. Mostly intact skull bird skull. We're going to want to keep this. We're going to want to stack these. I only managed to get four of them, but we're going to stack them up a little bit day by day. Because let's look at that sweet, sweet markup. Markup for the month tends to be about 720%. For the year, we're at 650%. Uh, there's actually been more this month than anything before. I mean, 143 ped this month versus 172 ped this year. So the markup on this one is going to be kind of volatile. If it's in demand, it's going to be huge. If it's not in demand, it's, it's probably going to drop quite a bit. But we're going to want to keep those mostly intact Skullbird Skulls. So we're going to switch over to our Ascension Armor. Next we're going to head to the Direweed Valley Teleporter. We're going to hunt us some level 10 Direweeds. We need 12 of those. Now the thing with the Direweeds, guys, you actually can stack this mission with the Pix Pollen mission which is a daily mission, but if you do it in conjunction with your ARC faction mission, you actually won't get it done every single day. You'll actually do it every two days. 
So I'll show you here in just a second where we get Pix Pollen. Pix Pollen rewards you with Sirene tokens. Those very, very valuable Sirene tokens that we need to do crafting. So we're going to want these smaller dire weeds, the level 10s. There's one. Somebody else is here doing the exact same thing. And I'm just going to use the attack nan uh, nano chip 10 because I could do this faster with. Well, it's faster with the chip. I could do it with the BP 20, but it's just faster to do it this way. Now the thing about these guys, there is loot that you're going to want to keep. The main one that I usually want to keep is the Dire Flaxen Weed. It's usually got pretty good markup because you're going to need it. So some people want to sell it off. Personally, I don't sell it off because you're going to need it later on whenever we get to the daily crafting missions for the Arc Faction badges. But we'll go over the loot from these guys here in just a second. We're at kill 6 of 12, 7 of 12. Eight of 12. Notice I just finished Pix Pollen. So we've got to do 12 of these kills every day for the Arc Faction mission. For Pix Pollen, you need 20 kills. So you could come do just the 12 like I'm going to do. And you do Pix Pollen every two days doing it that way. Or you could go ahead and do the extra 8 kills and get your 20 and complete not only the daily faction, but Pix Pollen every single day also. That would actually probably be a little bit more ideal, but I'm more or less trying to speed run this at the moment. Okay, so we finished with the Dire Weeds. We didn't get any Flaxen Weed today. That's fine. Um, I'll show you guys the Flaxen here in a minute. Whenever we go over all the loot. Head back to the teleporter. Now before we move on to the Penelion, we're actually going to head over and we're going to collect our reward from Pix Pollen because we're going to want to do something else really, really close to Pix Pollen while we're there. So let me get the waypoint. So it is right here at the Arc Immigration Zen Teleporter. Excuse me guys, I've got a little bit of a sniffle going on at the moment. Loading, loading, loading. Everything is loading. Okay, we come over to this wood fort. This is Pick. So she gave us the eight Sirene tokens for the 20 kills. Then we're going to run in here real quick. We're going to talk to the farmhand. And this is the test of strength daily. Now this does not count toward our Arc Faction missions, but since we're right here and we're getting ready to do Penelion, we might as well. Because guess what? It's just a level 17 Penelion. So we're going to knock it out real quick. Cool. Got it knocked out. And we got our mission token from it. So now we got our Sirene mission token from it. And we were able to do it while we're here dealing with Pix Pollen anyway. So now it's off our plate. 
Now there's also a mission that stacks with Penelion called Meet the Zenkimbro. You'll see that I've already completed it. It's earned 200 Penelion kill points. And for the daily arc faction, we need old, older six points. So eight kills a day, six points each. It takes a couple of days to do this mission, but it stacks really, really well with the Penelion since you got to do it anyway. Let's pull up our map and we can see that it's right over here. So we're going to jump right over here to the rookie training area. Now, obviously, I'm turning it in tomorrow while I will be able to get it again. Simply activate the mission. It will show us on our radar where we need to go to talk to the NPC. So today I'm turning it in, but tomorrow I want to come get this to start on getting 200 more points. And I got 0 0.3887 experience in combat reflexes. So that one is skill based. Now, I already have a bang load of combat reflexes, which is why it wasn't much for me. It'll be a lot more for you guys. Okay, so now that we've taken care of that, usually we would want to get that before doing the Penelion Cave. I'm turning it in. I'll have to get it again tomorrow before doing Penelion. We're going to head over to the Arc Staging Teleporter. This is going to be the fastest way to knock out your Penelion kills. Because remember, only the old maturity counts. Or I'm sorry, not, not Arc Staging. We want Arc Headquarters. Uh, where to go, where to go? Arc Headquarters. This is going to be the easiest, fastest way to knock out your daily kills for Penelion. Because we have to have the old maturity, which is the level 10s. So we're going to come to the Arc Headquarters over here. We're going to run right over here. This one over here will take you up to the third level. We're going to hit this one right here, which will take us up to level 2. Right behind me on the wall here, we're going to want to come over here. And we're going to want to hit the low-level Penelion hunts. This is going to take us into the cave instance. Now, once you're in here, guys, be sure that your weapon is repaired. Be sure that you've got your ammunition on you. Be sure that you've got everything you need before you come into this instance. And we will cover this instance in greater detail later. We're, like I said, just trying to get through this as fast as humanly possible right now. So far, we're at 12 minutes, 43 seconds. So we're running up the stairs, and then we're going to jump down. When we jump, we want to jump kind of a little bit close to this edge right here and toward the middle. We don't want to, we want to fall, not really jump. See, like this. Because if we jump, we end up hitting the wall, and then we take damage. We don't want to take damage if we can avoid it. And land in the water, go splash. Now the reason I said one of the things I want to do is not only show you guys the best way to speed run this and the best places to go, but I want to go over the loot with you guys too, is a lot of the loot that you will get from these hunting dailies, you will need to stack it up because you will need it later for the crafting dailies. So once we're in here, these guys really aren't going to bother us. Unless we bother them, they're not going to bother us, which is why I like this place. Plus we can just pick out the level 10s. So regen real quick. Reach in real quick. Knock it back. Now we only need eight of these kills. Now I had to turn in Meet the Zen Kimbra a while ago to get my combat reflexes because I finished it. I'll get that mission again tomorrow. And as I go through here, each of these kills would be six points towards my 200 points needed. See if there's another level 10 over here. Yep, here's one. Now you need 200 points to complete Meet the Zenkimbro. You only need 8 of these kills a day. So you're going to complete Meet the Zenkimbro pretty much every like 4 days. Like clockwork. And in here, this instance has auto loot too, which is, yeah, kind of handy dandy, I guess. Auto loot's never been a big deal for me because the way I play, I just double tap anyway, so... It's, looting's never been a big issue for me. I don't know why it is for so many other people. There have been instances where I've been killing extremely, extremely quickly, like in a mayhem or something. And in that case, okay, yeah, I get it, but... 
don't get it. Now the building to my right, this building right here, this is actually the exit. So don't go in there until you're ready to leave. Another level 10. This is going to be kill number 4 of 8, which puts us halfway done. Five of ten. And again, if I wasn't trying to more or less speed run this, I would probably be using the BP-20. That's what I usually do. But it just takes a little bit longer. So I'm just knocking most of this stuff out with the attack ship. And let's see, I need another ten. Where's another level ten? There's one. This will be 7 of 8. And that one right there will be 8 of 8. Now whenever we leave this building, when we go into that room and it teleports us out, there's actually a glitch. It's going to teleport us underneath the stairs at the moment. Okay, cool. So Penelion kills are done. Already did test of strength, got our Cyrene token from that by killing that one in the pen. I'll return to meet this in Kimbro so we can start our 200 kill point counts again tomorrow. That'll take four days to finish. So run into the middle of the room, don't do anything, it'll teleport you out. And then we're going to end up under the stairs. So the video I'm going to make after this one is going to be the first part of the arc faction crafting dailies I'm actually going to be splitting the arc faction crafting dailies into two separate videos because after doing a full analysis see we're underneath the stairs so I had to hit T because it's got to pop me up up there um, after doing a full analysis uh, in a flowchart of the arc faction daily crafting missions it's very clear that the arc faction daily crafting missions belong in two very separate categories and everything needs to be done in a very specific order. So a lot of the loot that we're getting right now by doing these hunting dailies, we're going to need to save and put in our storage, which we're going to go over at the end of this video, because we're going to need it for all those crafting dailies. It's going to be very, very important to those crafting dailies. So we're almost there. We're at 1739, 1740, and we're almost done. I think we can do this in just under 30 minutes, even with me recording. Using the BP-20 on everything but the Devastator Sea Wraith and not recording usually takes me about 35 minutes. Okay, so we're going to head over here to this little bitty island and the Murr Beach Keys Teleporter. That's where we're going to knock out the 110 Scout Bots. They're only level 3. For this one, we are going to use the BP-20 because it's perfect. These guys have 30 HP. So we're literally just going to run in a pin and slaughter these guys. Now, there is a kicker to these guys. Most people will miss it. These guys drop loot that looks like it has no markup and no value and no demand. And a lot of people TT it because it's not needed for the crafting dailies, at least not offhand or not for the crafting dailies that most people are looking at. Don't make that mistake. So yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys in the video here in a minute. At the end, I'll show you guys the loot that we're going to be getting from these guys that we're going to want to keep. Because there's one thing in particular that most people would not keep that we're going to want to keep. So these guys have exactly 30 HP. This gun in particular tends to do about 16 to 30 uh, damage as a damage interval. So it's just about perfect. This is also good if you've got some lower level weapons that you just want to burn up. This would actually be a really good place to use some explosive projectiles if I had a decent grenade launcher, or rocket launcher. The biggest thing is this one just kind of makes me dizzy, because you're constantly just spinning in a circle.
Ah. Oh. Sorry, I clicked off the screen there for a second. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these guys be unreachable. Kind of throws you for a loop. And we're already at 43 of 110. This is one of those areas where I could see auto loot becoming more important because you're shooting so fast and they're just kind of stacking up on top of each other. Sometimes you can miss a loot if you're not careful. There's really not anything that stacks with this. Not that I've been able to find anyway. Not from like a daily aspect. I guess if you had like an old iron mission or something for scout bot that would stack but you're not going to be able to get that unless you already have it. You would have to be an OG player returning to the game after a long time. We haven't had iron missions in several years now so unless you've still got iron missions active there's no way to get new ones. And even if you do once you complete the stage that you're on you can't move on. Which, you know, we got Codex out of it, that was the trade-off, and I'm fine with that because Codex is a far better system in my opinion. It's far easier to progress through, far faster to progress through, and once you get to the end with Codex you can just decide how often you want to keep going. With Irons, once you were done, you were done. There was very rarely an opportunity to go back and repeat it infinitely. I mean, I guess there were a few, I know there was one on Monria, you could do that like that for uh, Shub. Back in the day, JBK did that one a lot, but there were very, very few missions like that. Most of them, once your iron missions were done, it was just done. There was nothing else. And I like that with Codex. We don't have that with Codex. We can at least still progress and work on a repeat, as many repeats as we want. Yes, it gets more and more costly to do so. It takes longer and longer to make it happen, and you're not getting a different reward just because it's taking longer. But if, if you really want to go grind out a mob, it, technically, I mean, I guess if you want to grind out nothing but one mob your entire career in Entropia, you could. At least with Codex, you could. Codex also allows you to get your rewards a lot faster at faster intervals. Like, there used to be old iron missions where you had to kill, you know, 500, then 1,000 then 5,000, then 10,000. Like, when you when you complete a 5,000 kill count mission, and then you start a 10,000 kill count mission, it can take a very long time to complete 10,000 kills, depending on what the mob is. And, it, I mean, you might be waiting months or years to claim that reward. Alright, we're almost there. We're at 92 of 110, so this should only take another minute or two. And then we will go hunt the Swamp Lurkers. The Swamp Lurkers are actually my favorite. I know these guys really should be. But the Swamp Lurkers and these guys both, again, the, the loot that they're dropping is stuff that we're going to need for those crafting dailies. So I always get really excited when I go to the Swamp Lurkers because whenever I do actually get the loot I'm after, I'm like, yay, loot! It doesn't have to be something with a ton of markup. It doesn't have to be something with a ton of value. As long as it's handy and helps me do the crafting dailies that I want to do, that way I get the Arc Faction badges and start meeting the goals that I want to meet. That's all that matters. Alright, 103. 104, unreachable. 106. 107. 108. 109. Unreachable. Unreachable. Bam. 110. Alright. Got those out of the way. Now we're going to head over to the Great Plains Teleporter. And I'll put waypoints in the description. I'll also put the missions that I'm specifically referencing and the waypoints for those in the mission also. In the description, I'm sorry, I'll put the waypoints and names of those missions in the description also. Alright, so we're going to pull out the quad. No, that's not what I want to do. Pull out the quad. Jump over this here river. Go to this little swampy area right over here, just north of the Great Plains Teleporter. 
the very first mob that's going to be underneath us is going to be Epsom, Epsi, or S Epsom. They're like the smaller version of the Epsom Wasp. These are the level two or three hatchlings. And then right over here is just past the little waspy guys. Yep, tree. Just past the little wasp guys are the level five swamp lurkers. And there's a couple of little stacks of these guys. And the, you'll see on your radar, they're all just kind of standing there. And then the moment you get out of the vehicle, they all start moving around. We need 35 of these. So again, as fast as we can, this would be a lot more quote unquote efficient with the BP-20, but we're just gonna do it this way today. That way it doesn't take as long. All right, we're at five of 35. It keeps clicking off my screen for some reason. I just started doing that today. Now, as soon as we're done with the swamp lurkers, we're going to go back to the Tons Tao whatever teleporter where we got the missions from the mission terminal, where all the arc missions are and we will turn them in we'll grab our badges and then we're going to go to storage and i'm going to show you guys how to split up the loot and what loot you're going to want to keep and then the video will be over we're at 27 minutes 33 seconds we might actually be able to get all of this done in roughly 30 minutes which was my goal my goal was to actually do the hunting and go over the loot with you guys but I want you guys to see this doesn't have to be hard once you get down which teleporters to use and which order you want to do these in and which missions you want to stack it with it's really easy I love that we can stack the dire weed with picks pollen because it's got a pretty decent reward as far as the siren tokens goes I love that test of strength for that one Penelion kill is right there by picks pollen because it just makes it so much easier to knock that one kill out every day and get your siren token for it I love that Meet the Zen Kimbro is actually a skill-based mission that gives you skill rewards. And yeah, you might only get it once every four days, but it still adds up. The only reason my combat reflexes reward was so low is because I've got very, very high combat reflexes. If you guys do the Meet the Zen Kimbro every four days, you're probably going to have a lot better results than I do. Just because it's based in TT value, not based off how much you already have. So... The same TT value for a brand new player is going to be significantly more than it's going to be for me. And we're almost there. We're at 27 of 35. Now you guys notice I keep the quad spawn because these swamp lurkers, they've got weird aggravation ranges and, and weird ways that they kind of move. So you could potentially get in trouble from the healing end of things. If you do, it's always nice to just have the vehicle to be able to jump into so that the mob stops attacking you. Which is why I just leave my quad spawn. 31. He's unreachable. 32. 33. 34. And one more. Come here, little dude. And... 35. Done. 29 minutes, 49 seconds. Bam. Okay, back in the quad. Alright, we're going to turn around. We're going to go back to the Great Plains Teleporter. Yeah. I got lost. Okay, there we go. Heading south. Great Plains Teleporter. So let's turn these missions in real quick. We will go to storage and we will sort out the loot so you guys know what loot we're going to want to keep. And that'll be it. That'll be today's video. The 
way to do the arc faction daily hunting missions as quickly as possible now like i said i do prefer to use the bp20 on everything other than the devastator sea race but that's just me it takes a few minutes longer it doesn't take that much longer all right and we're gonna hop over here bam start to finish 30 minutes not bad to knock out five hunting dailies and almost 200 kills that's really not horrible all right get our daily get our daily badges woo woo click again be sure we're good all right cool so bada bing bada boom we got that now let's head to storage and let's look at the stuff that we want to keep from today's hunt we'll talk about why also all right storage terminal and hunting loot okay so we got our arc faction badges obviously we want to keep those okay so while we were out hunting we got swamp lurker oil from our swamp lurkers we're going to bring that over here we're going to want to stack that up because we're going to end up using that to make lurker lube so if you get swamp lurker oil we're going to want to stack that and the fact that we need this is why it has a good markup if you look it's got a markup of about 200 percent there's a lot of people who don't stack it up and keep it to do the crafting dailies with they'll just sell it off so if you sell it off or if you're out hunting swamp lurker getting your codex up and specifically looting this to sell it for markup that's why swamp lurkers are a great mob to go after for markup another item that we're going to want to keep is whenever we're hunting those scout bots they drop this low grade scrap we're going to want to keep that because this low grade scrap is needed for our crafting dailies and again we see about 200 percent markup really closer to about 185 at the moment but about 200 percent because this is going to be needed for the crafting dailies also now a lot of times people will tt this this is the low grade power supply we also got from the scout bots and if we look it's got 400 percent markup and this is why people are like well there's not really a ton of uses for it no there's not but we're going to need this for a daily mission also it's not related to art faction badges but we will need it so do not tt this keep it and if you get a medium grade power supply doesn't even have to be from these missions it can be from other mobs it's very similar to this looks the same design wise only it's blue and a little bit bigger if you get medium grade power supplies you're going to want to hang on to those there is a one-time mission that we can do with medium power supplies should we get some so we're also going to want to keep what else what else uh the mostly intact skullbird skulls which we talked about at the beginning those are needed for crafting which is why they have the markup that they have and if we can get it we're going to want to keep our dire flaxen weed because dire flaxen weed is needed for the dailies as well for the daily crafting missions in addition if you get crystal pollen you're going to want to keep it not necessarily because we need it for the dailies but just because it's got really 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 good markup so we're going to want to keep the crystal pollen which would be from dire weed we're definitely going to want to keep the dire weed flaxen this wool looking thing that's from dire weed also but we're going to need that for the daily and then we're going to keep the skullbird skulls which we get from the devastator sea wraith the lurker oil that we get from the swamp lurker and then we're going to want to keep the low grade scrap and the low grade power supply that we get from the scout bot now everything else uh, it's kind of on you if you want to keep it or not personally i'm not going to keep the vast majority of this i'm going to actually tt the vast majority of it So I'm going to TT this, 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 I'm going to TT this. Here's our Sirene mission tokens that we got from Pix Pollen and that daily one Penelion kill. I'm going to TT this, and I'm going to TT this, I'm going to TT this, and bada bing, bada boom. There's our money back from the hunt, more or less and i've got a couple of extractors that i'll go through here in a second so that is the fastest way most efficient way that i have found to do the daily arc hunting missions 
all said and done, even going over the loot with you guys, as of right now, we're at 35.27. So, awesome. Uh, I'll be putting it all in the description below. I want you guys to be able to knock this out as quickly as humanly possible. And to know what loot you're going to want to keep that we just went over. Or that you can actually go out and farm for markup. If you want to go farm Swamp Lurkers and Scout Bots for markup, feel free. Be my guest. Work on that codex. So, guys, hopefully you'll be completing this with me every single day. Remember that these missions reset every 21 hours, which is great. It gives you a little bit of leeway in the day. And hopefully we'll be able to collect tons and tons and tons of Arc Faction badges very, very quickly. So, guys, I'm going to leave it there for today. Sip, sip, smack, smack. Y'all know the rest. Head over to earnped.com because when you earn, we earn by far the best way you guys can help support us. Simply use the links on earnped.com to go to hideout.tv. Hideout will automatically add us as a redemption option for your hideout points. Guys, please do as the banner says at the bottom of the screen. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to be notified of new content that we post. That keeps you up to date with the game, with the content that we put out there, with events that are going on in game, opportunities in game, and ways you can learn to work and play harder, not smarter. Or, smarter, not harder. Sorry, tongue-tied, backwards. Guys, also, please hit that like button on every single video because when you do, it helps us combat the trolls and the haters that are out there. It really goes a long way. But guys, we also want you to know the impact that you are having. By hitting those buttons, you're putting us on the right side of the YouTube algorithm. YouTube is putting our videos in front of people that they know play PC games, MMOs, and real cash economy games. And the person sees it pop up and they're like, oh, hey, I've never heard, what's this? What's this Entropia thing? Never heard of that. They click on it, they start watching the channel, watching the videos, they learn how to play the game smarter, not harder. And next thing you know, they're downloading the game. And we're getting more and more emails from those people saying, hey, you're right, I was just on YouTube one day and one of your videos popped up and I'd never heard of Entropia. And now I love it, I can't get enough of it. I've already been to Icarus, I've already been to North Swamp Camp. Uh, I'm already past the level three Exo Youngs, I'm working on my codex, I, I've almost hit a repeat. Would you please tell your subscribers and your viewers the giant impact that they are having just by hitting that like button to help support you or just by hitting that subscribe button because since they did, Entropia is now my hobby, it's now my passion. It's not in the game that I love. And that really means a lot not only to them, but it means a lot to get those emails every week from people. And we want to pass that message along to you guys because you guys deserve to know the impact that you're having. So guys, we'll leave it there for today. Sip, sip, smack, smack. Y'all know the rest. Take care, Stevie's.